you remember. Be home soon. Man, I could not wait to get in front of the camera to talk to you guys about this film. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? I want to thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for If Bill Street Could Talk. I really do appreciate it. Now, I went to this film, If Bill Street Can Talk, completely blind. I did not see any trailers, any TV spots, nothing like that. I did that on purpose. I heard how good the film was up and coming to its release, how it well it did and how well it was received at the film festival earlier this year. Um, knew it was a predominantly black cast. Knew it was written and directed by Barry Jenkins, the brother that was behind Moonlight that won all the awards a couple of years ago. So I wanted to go into this film completely fresh. And if possible, if you can stand it, I think you should do the exact same thing. Now, this is a predominantly black cast. And of course, that makes me proud. And earlier this year in 2018, I was a little worried when it comes to predominantly or Films aimed at the black community. I mean, we got Proud Mary with Taraji P. Henson. It was a disappointment. Wrinkling Time by Sister Ava DuVernay. That was even a bigger disappointment. And then Tyler Perry gave us that crap bag of a film, Acrimony. I could not stand that film. Other than Black Panther that was released in February, it just really wasn't looking that great. But later on in the year, we got Black's Klansman. We got Green Book. We got The Hate You Give. All fantastic films. I love them all. And I think that I love If Bill Street Could Talk just a little bit more. Like I said, Barry Jenkins, this dude right here is becoming my most favorite director of all time. He knows how to direct a film. He knows how to write a film. He knows how to pull all the right pieces together to give you a piece of art that you've never seen before. And as far as things that we've never seen before, especially like with black people, we get a ton of comedies and dramas and things like that. I mentioned Tyler Perry. You know, we get a ton of Kevin Hart films, uh, was a Tiffany Haddish and things like that. Early in February, we got something that we've never seen before. We got a superhero blockbuster comic book fan. We get biographies and things like that, you know, but when's the last time we got a love story, a true love story, a film that is really a textbook example of black love? That's what If Bill Street Could Talk is. And I, I mean, I'm just not going to waste your time. I want this film to win Best Picture. Seriously, I, I have not seen every film so I can't com that was released this year. So I can't completely come to a conclusion. But right now, this film is up there. I, I freaking love the hell out of it. Like I said, I think this is my third time seeing it already. It was written and directed by uh, Mr. Barry Jenkins. Um, it's um, based off the novel by the Mr. Late James Baldwin. Uh, the novel novel is of the same name. The first trailer of this film was released August 2nd, 2018 this year. That's James Baldwin's birthday. And so, you know, they wanted to give him some type of respect. If he was still alive today, um, he would be 94 years old. And when I say that this is a love story, it is a love story between uh, two characters that they're the main protagonists of this film. We have Miss Kiki Lane by the name of Trish. And I think this is her, her, her first you know, like big project. And we also have uh, Mr. Uh, Stephen James. His name in the film was Alonzo Funny Hunt. Uh, he was in Selma and he was also uh, in Race, which came out uh, a couple of years ago. And I will be honest, I did not see that film. I do need to see it. But I can say hands down. And I love the Notebook movie that came out a number of years ago. I cannot, I, I have never in my entire life off the top of my head rooted for a couple to make it as much as I wanted to make it in this couple. I mean, as I as much as I wanted this couple to make it in this film. I mean, my goodness gracious, their performances were splendid. Um, everything about them from their head to their toe, the hair, costumes, everything was just fantastic. I believed every word that came out of their mouth and I could put myself in their shoes. Not only could I sympathize, but I can empathize. This just was a beautiful romance between these two individuals and uh, it gives me hope and not only is this film a love story between these two characters it is a love story between the whole picture and the whole family I mean we have this man and this woman Tr Trish and Fonny that love each other very much you have Regina Hall the mother of Trish who gives love throughout the whole family the, the love between her and her husband is great too the love between the siblings the cousins the friends 
stands around the block. The person at the grocery store that stands up a certain amount of times they have to do with racism. There is just so much love in this movie that it just speaks volumes and like just really makes me feel enchanted for lack of a better word. Well, no, not lack of a better word. I think that's the perfect word to describe it. And what... Um, the director does so well is he knows how to paint the situation just to bring it out and make you feel all the emotions. And he does a really great job with that, especially with the score. Hands down, like seriously, this soundtrack, this score is one of the best scores I've ever heard. Seriously, I have done more with this soundtrack when this score after I've seen this movie that I've only done with like Hans Zimmer. He is the composer uh, for the Dark Knight trilogy and things like that. I have I, I jam this soundtrack like over and over and over again in my car you can do so much to it it is just freaking brilliant when i uh i was on youtube listening to the soundtrack i was looking at some of the comment section uh some of the comments for uh, a number of songs uh in this movie one of the comments was like this song right here is the best description of life and i don't remember the name of the comment that said that it was just some random person but to be honest with you that's the best way to describe it I am a big fan of fantastic scores and the way, uh, let me give this dude credit, Mr. Nicholas Bertel, uh, he uh, also did the composition for Vice, which is in theaters right now, and also uh, the big short, which came out uh, a number of years ago, which uh, talked about how, how everything crashed in this country with the housing market. I really don't remember the score standing out that much, but it did stand out in this film. He also did the score, the soundtrack, the music, uh, and Moonlight, which came, uh, which, uh, came out a couple of years ago. And the instruments that he used, I'm a big fan of the violin, and there were just a ton of strings in this movie, and it, it, it was just, it was perfect. I mean, just to describe it, you know, it was just a beautiful composition of musical greatness. It just, it made me feel some things that I've just never felt before. I felt, when I was listening to the soundtrack, the score in this movie, I seriously felt like a melanated Superman. Like, seriously, like, no, like I felt bulletproof. I felt like I can fly in space and move planets. I mean, that is just really how I felt. And then when you're matching that with all these great performances, with Fani, with Stephen James, with Regina Hall and things like that, I mean, it's, 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 it's nothing short of breath taking like real talk and let me go back to the relationship between the two main stars funny and trish in this movie funny is a good dude he is a stand-up guy i mean he is just a good man i mean he makes his woman feel comfortable at all times he just he makes a way out of no way and he does it with charisma and personality and just random swag i mean he's just you know able to do it i mean like you know he can have three nickels a pencil and a rubber band and can make a house out of it or at least make you feel good you know i mean he would turn crap into a diamond and i mean it, i mean he does that and you know when i'm when i'm watching this movie of course the i i, I feel in the relationship that the male should lead but of course you know you know our strong sisters out there our strong women out there they do have a very equally important role in a relationship but i like how uh it was written that sometimes either or party has to step up to the plate to defend the other one and the way they did that in this film was brilliant i mean these two are like soulmates like there's a sex scene in this film and the lead up to it i mean you're just rooting for them and not in like a perverted way but i mean it felt like if these two individuals did not have sex in this moment right now that all life in the universe would cease to exist i mean that's just the way it was i mean it was just like perfect like it was supposed to happen like they were seeding the earth literally like i, I cannot describe it you just have to see the movie for yourself and then when they have this beautiful score this beautiful composition that comes in and caters to it and just elevates it to another level it's just like man like i i am like in enlightened right now like seriously i, I feel like i'm I, I don't know going through the source wall or something like that but then that brings me up to my first complaint my first gripe of the film and it's just this gripe one while you have this perfect lead up to this beautiful scene to where everything is just good it did get a little out excuse me it did get a little awkward this sex scene while it was just so perfect and i'm just eating it up like this with my hands clenched like oh yes give it to her and you give it to him for some reason I don't know if the director was doing this on purpose or he was just trying to illustrate, you know, how some possibly virgins can bumble over themselves during the first time. It was awkward. He cut the music, put some other music on. And while I was going like this at first, then I was like, wait, what happened? 
No. Go back to what you was doing before. I was loving it. I was loving it. It was great, you know, but it did not last that long, of course. But, you know, that, that you know, it did get a little weird for me right there. But, you know, that was just, you know, like just a little gripe for me that kind of, you know, made me upset right now. Actually, I'm thinking about it. But I also just like how the family itself engages. I said it's not just a love story between the two, the the main couple. It's a love story between the whole family. I mean, um, Trish's sister, just the way she talks to her uh, sister, Trish or whatever. You know, when you're addressing your parents or anybody, you know, adult figure, you know what I'm saying? Be respectful, but don't bow your head. Stand up tall and, you know, be proud of what you're speaking in. You know, the way that the mother and father are dancing in the living room in front of the den, just like the father, he just, I love your mama. <laughs> I love your mama. I mean, like, this is, he didn't say that in the movie, but that's just a lot of what I'm thinking about. And it was just beautiful to see that on screen. It's just like this black love. And I think it's important for all families to, for especially the children to see how much the husband does love the wife. That is very important and will put a, a permanent staple, a good staple in their head on how a family should be raised. Not, you know, everybody got to cater to the same thing, but I think you get the idea, but that's important for every family. And that's very important for every black family. Like, seriously, I haven't seen that in the film in a long time. I mean, I've seen it in Blackish. I've seen it in Black Lightning just a little bit. But they knock it out the park in this movie right here. And there's nothing raunchy and nothing like that. It's just like, you know, just pure love. I mean, like, I, I saw my brother in this movie. I saw my dad. I saw my mom. I saw my cousin. I saw my sister, even though I don't have a biological sister. I saw my homeboys. I mean, there was just so much that I was able to relate to. This film resonated to me in just such a way that even in more than black panther did like seriously and you know of course you know we were hyped for that movie and then i mean like just let, let's talk about another performance right here two performances regina hall everybody wants a mama like this i mean regina hall like i mean i love my mama to death and you know my mom will go to the ends of the earth you know, for me and my, my younger brother. And then Regina Hall was able to do that same thing. And this movie is like, seriously, move heaven and earth. You know, align the stars and all the planets and the solar system. I mean, she would do that for a loved one. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I just like how they just like, remember Soul Food that came out like 1997, Big Mama and her. Uh, we are all these pieces. But if we gather together and make this mighty fist, you get the quarter. I, I don't remember exactly. But it was like that in this movie times two. And not only like her, like just her performances on top like i ain't never felt an f word so much in this movie until i heard it come out of the mouth but then uh, regina Hall may still not have the best performance mr brian tyree henry you know what i'm saying what's up my brother he popped up on the scene with me uh with donald glover in that series atlanta that's on fx like woo man hold up while this film has so much joy and so much love it also has some mundane daunting moments too because of course it has to do with you know racism and the system of white supremacy and you know how we're oppressed and all i was about to say all that good stuff that shit is not good stuff all that bad stuff you know what i'm saying but for somehow you know black people we're still able to make it and have a good time and turn you know something into nothing but when brian tyree henry popped up on the screen or whatever it was just like that home but that you ain't seen in years like oh snap bro what's good oh, nigga, what is good how you been man you looking you don't put us away you still look good but you know you eating them hamburgers bro let's go over here you know what i'm saying i got some beers yada 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 it's like I like I felt like I was in the movie like as a ghost just like you know you know what I'm saying what's up da 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 but then when he sits down for the real and he is trying to catch his friend uh finally up or whatever like it's like he is describing a a um like a real life nightmare that he cannot awake from that like uh, uh like seriously like freddy krueger is just after him and he's talking about the system of white supremacy the acting in it is so great but when they're sitting down and talking it's not just a dialogue or whatever that is bringing this scene life it is the composition by mr nicholas brutel and the camera direction by uh mr barry jenkins while this camera is centered on one person it swivels over to the left like this and then swivels over to the right and just sits there and then the camera is moving it's like you feel like you're the camera like looking at this person talk like this and then looking at this person talk like this and then like when i was talking about the musical composition what the what Nicholas Brutel used was I think there were like big tubas, but it sounded like an air horn. We all know what an air horn or air horn sounds like. It's loud, it's annoying, and you want it to stop. But he was able to use that tool, he was able to use that sound device to create the, this horrific 
image in your head as what Brian Tyree Henry is doing. And while I'm just sitting, I'm like, oh, my brother, I feel you. I'm, uh, I feel so sorry for you. I'm here. You know what I'm saying? It, it's just, it, 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 it's truly an, an awakening. You have all these these uh, aspects of filmmaking coming into one just to give you this this bold scene that just stands out and speaks volume. And like, I just, I just ate it all up. I mean, I love this film. I feel like I can just talk on and on and on. But this is just like, I, I love this film. Other than the gripe that I talked about earlier, there was a... Um, there was like a big jump in the transition like there was a there was one scene it transitioned horribly to the next scene i didn't know if the movie was over it seemed like it was like a 10 second gap where it was looking like at a black screen like i'm looking over to the left looking over to my right like is the movie over with and then it starts back but those are just really the only two gripes um i also like how he just and uh mr barry jenkins just infused this um like with real life stock footage of like you know, plantation times and, you know, black men and black women being on the field working to death. That may sound horrible, like, Brandon, why are you praising it? It's just the way that they tied it into the film of how nothing really has changed. Because this film right here, it takes place in the 70s. And initially, I was just kind of asking myself, okay, when are they going to tell us what year this film takes place? But they really never do. And then I really appreciate that because while it is a period piece, it's also timeless. Because like I just said, for us, much hasn't changed since, you know, the end of the Civil War, 1865, we really haven't come up. I mean, our national, what we own right now in the national wealth has not changed. And they kind of sprinkle that into the film uh, here throughout. Um, is there, oh, also, do y'all remember the film by Tyler Perry since I brought him up earlier, uh, A Family That Prays? Well, I hated Acrimony, The Family That Prays with Kathy Bates. That's still one of my favorite ones. Y'all remember that scene? Your son is a Cartwright. And what happened right after that? <laughs> I want to know what top, what what tops higher. What happened in that film, or what happened in this film? If Bill Street could talk, you know, you um, uh, you're just gonna have to see what I'm talking about. I don't want to spoil it for you. I feel like I've talked so much, but in, I mean, there's so much that you can relate to on the positive side, even on the negative side of black people in this world, in this country that just get on my damn nerve, that are just kind of like delusional and don't want to face facts. And that brings me to like holy rollers. Now, I'm a believer in God myself and I put God first in everything that I do or I try to do, I try to. And if you're a holy warrior, a holy roller out there, and if you don't know what that means, that's just somebody that's like literally 24 7, seven days a week. God, 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, I want to thank you for this eyelash or this is eyebrow. I want to thank you for this. I want to thank you for this straw. I want to thank you for my shoe strings. I want to thank you for this. I want to thank you for that. You know, I mean, that's fine if you want to do that, but sometimes people, um, take that too far to where they're delusional. Case in point, my example is, um, I forgot the name of the film. It was a spiritual based film, but uh, this was kind of trending or going around on social media not too long ago to where uh, it was a black woman pr preaching uh, up on stage. And she said one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life. She was like, I am not a black woman. I am a Christian woman that have to, happens to be black. <sighs> That's just insane. That is the, one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. I, I shouldn't even have to explain it. There are characters like this in this movie. And I just have to say, I like the way that it was addressed. I, you know, I, I just have to say that. I won't say anymore. You just have to, you know, uh, you just have to see the film for yourself. But guys, this film I heard is a cinematic masterpiece. I absolutely loved it. I will be paying to go see this thing multiple times. I will be buying it when it comes out. I will be supporting this soundtrack, this score. I, I, I want to support this. Guys, please go see this movie. It is worth your time. If I had to rate If Bill Street Could Talk out of a 1 out of 10, I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. Yes, a 9.5 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion. Have you seen If Bill Street Could Talk or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. If you don't, that's fine, but you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that good stuff It's right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy by providing links to all that down in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning into my opinion slash review for if bill street could talk directed and written by barry jenkins and off the novel of the same name by mr james barwin and before you go don't forget that my name is brennan keith avery and that's just my opinion peace